Despite the thousands of incidents of domestic violence that occur every year in Idaho, the state still provides almost no general fund dollars to domestic violence services. The bulk of the services are paid for through federal grants. For rural areas such as Oneida County, funding streams are a source of constant worry. The Oneida Crisis Center helps roughly 100 victims a year. We've been on our community for 25 years, helping individuals whose lives have been thrown into trauma because of actions and if not their own. And each year there's the, the stress of finding the finances, the monies to sustain our program. Without the competitive grants, we would not have any money, basically. My, my few community members would not equal sustainability. United Way would maybe keep us limping along, but not our full range of services. So sustainability is a concern. The Oneida County Shelter does not apply for the funding they'd receive from any state dedicated dollars. The domestic violence state funds are collected from marriage certificates, divorces, our county is small, so we don't have a lot of those. So the pool of money that I could pull from for, for that grant, again, it's competitive, is little. And so I have chosen for the last couple of years to let that little bit of money go to my um, sister agencies within our region. According to the Idaho Council on Domestic Violence and Victim Assistance, the money most shelters in the state rely on is nearly all federal dollars. 93% of our uh, victim service funding comes from federal grants. The bulk of those is um, VOCA funding or Victims of Crime Act, which is not taxpayer money, but it's penalties on federal crimes. And that was um, paid out of what's called the Crime Victims Fund, which was declining for a variety of reasons. There was some legislation passed in July of 2021 called the VOCA Fix to start um, increasing the balance again but unfortunately the increase has been slower than we thought. That dedicated fund that Llewellyn also referred to generates $15 per marriage license, $20 per divorce, and $10 per protection order violation. Those funds can be used for domestic violence shelters and anything that isn't covered by a federal grant. But according to the council, the dedicated fund formula is flawed. They hope to address that with the legislature this year. Right now it's distributed based on where the marriage license was issued, which has nothing to do with the need for domestic violence services. So we're proposing that we take need and demand into account so we can put that money where it's most needed. Idaho shelters and domestic violence service providers receive no direct general funds from the state. According to a 2021 report from the Montana Board of Crime Control, neighboring Washington state has several funds for sexual assault and domestic violence victims using general funds, totaling more than $8 million a year, while Wyoming applies $3.4 million in general funds each year. Some legislators hope to change the funding in Idaho. The budget is a reflection of our priorities and values. And um, for a long time, since I've served in this legislature and decades before me, there have been people that have been begging for money to go toward victim services. Now, in a state that is so resistant to take federal funds, you would think we'd wanna do it the Idaho way and help our citizens. So I'd like to see our state allocate monies toward that cause. The Idaho Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault also sees a need for state funding. The coalition also operates predominantly on federal funding and more funding could allow them to offer more resources. The Idaho Coalition is um, one of the few coalitions, very few coalitions in the country who do not have state appropriated funds specifically for domestic violence programs. The Oneida Crisis Center offers services for people experiencing sexual assaults, stalking, domestic violence, and human trafficking. Domestic violence and family violence isn't selective as to where it happens, and it happens in our rural community. In fact, maybe it's a little easier to happen here because we're isolated, and folks are isolated, and they're marginalized from the main, my, mainstream power structure. I mean, they don't have lots of places they can go to get services. And so not only is the, uh, the United Crisis Center so valuable to victims of violence, but to our community at whole. And our whole mission statement is that we want a prosperous and, and healthy community. And so if we can help family relationships be healthy, that's gonna benefit our community and society as a whole. The need is there and will continue to be. 
So we started collecting um, last July what we call need and demand data on counseling and housing. And we were asking how many um, victims are you able to shelter and how many are on your waiting list? And those numbers were a bit shocking because we found that there's almost as many people needing shelter and waitlisted for it as people we are able to shelter. The other data point we were tracking is wait lists for counseling, both for adults and kids. And again, the number of people waitlisted and the amount of time that they have to be on a wait list before getting services is very high, which tells us that there is, just like our programs were telling us, there is more demand for services than services available right now. Meanwhile, the council continues to prioritize the funding it does have. The council is trying to keep services available for victims statewide, because wherever you live in the state, you deserve access to services if you need them. And if we're going to do that and help our rural programs survive, we have to have some way to prioritize how the funds are spent and distributed where we take into account need and demand. So as part of our strategic plan is that we've agreed to prioritize direct services, which means funding jobs for things like counselors and victim advocates, funding shelters, funding the direct services, which is basically food, shelter, counseling, those types of things for victims statewide. Plans to address the funding distribution are in the works for the next legislative session. We also have a heavy lift. We're trying to change our administrative rules this session, which impacts how we spread our federal money throughout the state. And in the past, that VOCA money has been distributed based on square miles and population, which has no tie to need and demand. And our other funding stream, FIPSA, has been just evenly divided around the state, but we don't have an even number of DV shelters in each region of the state. We work collaboratively with um, stakeholders, our funded programs, to go through a negotiated rulemaking session, which was very well attended. And we have a new model for grant distribution that we're hoping to have the legislature approve this session so that our next grant cycle, we can take need and demand data into account when we have to spend those limited funds. We all need to be involved in ending domestic violence and ending gender-based violence. And this is not a, just a family issue. This is not a private issue. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, call the National Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 or text 88788.